We'd have an old saying up in the county cabin about someone like him. His heart is in the right place, but his head is full of mad dog shite. That's <laughs> just that way he is, yeah. if you'll pardon the Esperanto. Indeed, the same fellow said he spoke Esperanto like a native. But anyway, he, he used to love to go to a wake. There was nothing he liked better than going to a wake. He said the best wake he was ever at, some local fella was over beyond in England walking on the roads and he died in an accident and they brought him home to wake him and fair play to them, a lot of his English friends came over too and there were so many people at that wake they had to open up out sheds out in the, in the yard to have tables, dressing tables laden down with cr uh, kegs of Guinness and crates of bottles of Ricardo's ale, and another old shed with another table, groaning under a Mount Everest of ham sandwiches. Now he said there were so many people at that wake that there were two young fellas out in the yard, stripped to the waist, with oars from a boat, and what were they doing? They were stirring a rain barrel full of mustard for all the ham sandwiches that would be ate that time at that wake. Well, Peter used to love going to wakes because he liked to get in there and there'd be free drink and whatever going. He used to buy the local newspaper of a Thursday, the anglo Celt, and the first page he'd open would be the second page, first page he'd turn to, births, marriages and deaths. And he'd be looking at the dead column to see if he knew anyone. Not that it mattered a damn if he, if he knew them or not. There's a queer thing he used to say when you look at the dead column. It's not hard queer how people do seem to die in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd take a pin out of, the, out of the lapel of his jacket and he'd close his eyes and he'd stick it into the dead column just like you're picking out a horse in the E3 Grand National. And he'd say, there's a Brady lassie after dying up beyond Penalty. I think I might be related to a fella who once borrowed a shovel from a cousin of an aunt of this lassie whose own first cousin uh, worked in the, in the local mobile library. I think I might be related. I'd go up there and I'd pay me respects. <laughs> and he'd get into all sorts of situations and get into wakes and be pegged out and all this. There was one time he put a pin in the paper and he said, there's a Sheridan person there, I can't work out if it's a fella or a, 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 a Gawson or a Lassie, a Yaka. I'm going to go up to that way. It's happening up there outside Coot Hill. So he goes up and first of all, there's the removal. And uh, uh, he goes up and there's a big crowd of people in the graveyard and he sees all these people milling around an old woman and he says, that must be the mother. He goes up and he shakes her hand. He says, you probably don't know me. PJ Galligan is my name. But I think I'm related to a fellow whose first cousin once knew a lassie from over the hill who herself was walking for an uncle's boss of someone I'm very sorry for your trouble. <laughs> and of course she'd say, oh, that's very kind. Will you come back to the house? We're having a few people in. Oh, he said, oh, I will. Now, this time he was going back to this house and he had to get a lift because the house was about 15 miles away from where the church was. And he got a lift from a fellow who was driving the car. This man was related to the dead person and it turned out to be a man who had died. So Peter's sitting in the front passenger seat. There's a lassie behind him in the back and a gauze and a young fellow on the other side. And they're driving out the road and it was June of the year. Warm, balmy summer's day. Well, they're not too long on the road. When doesn't PJ realise? Didn't he have a rake of pints on him the night before? And wasn't there a fart on the way? 